Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the Hario V60 Mugen. So this is a new dripper released by Hario and I really want to talk about it because I think it is so aligned with kind of my entry into the pour over space. So for obvious reasons, I started pour overs, at least good pour overs at home with a Stag X dripper. Now that's a $60 dripper and in my experience, it is really hard to get a bad cup of coffee out of the Stag X. You can use a variety of pouring techniques, a variety of grind sizes, and you can get something that is pretty decent. Now, the thing is, is when I started out with pour overs, you know, my technique wasn't very good at all. Uh, and I took my beginner's technique and I applied it to a V60 and I could just never get a cup of coffee out of the V60 that I enjoyed compared to the Stag X because my technique just wasn't any good. So that is why the V60 Mugen is so interesting to me because from my understanding, this is that beginner's very forgiving pour over dripper that is a great entry into kind of the pour over space. Now, before we go into quick differences, let me just show you what comes in, in the box. So it is literally a box. Uh, this guy was about $15. I got this from Karasu in Japan. Uh, you definitely want to buy a lot of stuff from them if you're in the USA because shipping is a lot of money and you, you just get a manual. So basically, this is all you get. So I've basically only been using the recipe that is stated in the manual, which is you put 20 grams of coffee in here, you then pour 240 grams of water in a single pour. And I will say the cups of coffee I've gotten out of this dripper are really, really good. Considering the fact that it is so straightforward, just do a single pour and all you have to do is just do concentric circles and you're done. It feels like we're getting a lot of the properties that are really great out of the Stag X here, but at a much lower price point. Okay, entry level, if you're just a beginner, you just wanna pour water into this, you will probably get a pretty decent cup of coffee. Now, some brief differences, between the V60 and the Mugen V60 are the insides. As you can see, the inside designs are completely different. Of course, also the physical designs are a, a bit different as well. The Mugen that I have is this really nice translucent black and I have a standard white plastic V60 here. Some other differences in my experience is just how filter papers stick to the Mugen. You can put in an O2 V60 filter, you know, you fold it up, it just sticks to the edges here. And from my understanding, that is really what's helping the Mugen be such a forgiving dripper compared to the V60. The V60, in my opinion, has a much, much higher skill cap. Basically, you can start applying so many different versions of pouring techniques, you can start really, really controlling your flow through this guy to adjust the cup of coffee in any sort of way. It feels less like that with the Mugen simply because it just, you kind of just put water in and it seems like there is this assist that goes on as the water just drains through. Not that that's a bad thing because at the end of the day, you're going to get really great cups of coffee out of both. It just, it feels like it's so much easier to get a good cup of coffee out of the Mugen. You don't have to be so reliant on good pouring technique as you do with this guy. You're paying such a low price point to, to, to entry here and you're going to get something pretty good. Whereas with the regular V60, you definitely can apply a lot of good technique to this, but for a regular normal person, say you're a beginner, I feel like it is just much, much harder to get a good cup of coffee here. However, I will say that you can apply good technique to both of these and get good cups of coffee. It just feels like you have more flexibility in terms of getting whatever you want out of a V60, whereas on the Mugen, it is just always going to be a decent, good enough cup of coffee, at least in my opinion. So let me show you guys how this exactly works. So I put in 20 grams of coffee. Our water's heated up, our coffee's ground. What you do wanna do is you take your V60 filter, this is an O2 filter, and you just wanna fold it along the, the edge like that. Then obviously you take a carafe or a cup, just gonna stick it on here, stick the Mugen on top, and we will do a single pour. Uh, so we're going to just unfold the filter into the dripper. I'm going to pre-wet, and then I'm gonna put in 20 grams of coffee, then I'm just gonna do a 240 gram single pour. The stag here is set to 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Basically, the filter paper just sticks to the edges. So I'm just pouring in circles. And I'm basically 
just going in to out, pouring in a concentric circle. Now I'm hitting the outside of the edge, and I, and I don't even think my technique is that good, right? So now I'm going out to the outside, and now I'm hitting 240 grams. And that's it. Now I just let this sit and drain. And this is what I've been doing for pretty much all of my Mugen pours. I have experimented with blooming a little bit, but I feel like this already results in such a good cup of coffee uh, that the bloom isn't necessarily needed. Uh, if you do want to do the bloom, at least in my experience, it has allowed me to adjust the uh, sweetness, it feels like, just at the very beginning. Again, not an expert at pour overs. Okay, so that was easy. All I did was I just let it drain down, and that was about two and a half minutes or 240 something on here. Smells amazing. And it also visually looks really nice. I really like the colors that are coming out of uh, this particular coffee that I'm using, which is a coffee from Broadsheet Coffee Roasters. It just provides a really nice balanced cup of coffee that has decent enough body in my opinion, but really nice clarity, especially in the flavor notes. And also, I just really want to stress this. Look at how easy it was for me to actually do this, which was just grind coffee, put it in there, pour in circles, and I'm done. So really nice body there. I'm getting this nice sweetness in here. This is an Ethiopian that has peach and orange notes, and I 100% am getting those notes out of this dripper. And this is such a cheap dripper, and I just love that so, so much about this. Really good stuff. One of my friends, Brad, told me that you can take these Kalita 155 filters, or actually this is the Stagex filter, and you can stick it into the Mugen. This basically turns this into some sort of Kalita Mugen hybrid, which acts very similarly to an origami style of dripper. So this was the recipe that uh, Brad sent me, so we're gonna go ahead and try that. So you take the Kalita filter, stick it in here, we're going to make sure that it is uh, fairly flush and we're gonna pre-wet, but we're going to use 20 grams of coffee, we're gonna bloom to 60 grams, then we're going to pour to 220, then we'll pour to 300. It should flow actually a fair bit faster than the regular V60 filter. Basically, my standard for this is that if it results in a good tasting cup of coffee, then I'll be pretty happy. Seems to be just dripping a lot, lot faster than the V60 filter. It seems like there is the, the body is just a little bit smoother. However, it seems like there is much, much more sweetness. And I think from my understanding, it really depends on how high up or how leveled you keep the, the water level at the top of the dripper as it is dripping down. I think I did let it bloom a little bit long before starting my po initial pours. Uh, however, this is a good cup of coffee. It is very interesting to see that you can just stick another filter in this dripper and start applying some of those you know, cooler V60 or Kalita techniques instead of just doing a single pour and you definitely can control a lot of different things. That is really awesome because you can just buy one dripper, you can get started doing a simple single pour to get a pretty decent cup of coffee and then you can start applying interesting techniques with I think even the same filters and you can even use a different set of filter if you want to mimic or try a sort of hybrid flat bottom style dripper. So now we'll go back to the conclusions. And kind of to wrap up now, I'll show you this really quick. This is how fun, how well these filters stick to the dripper. Is that, look at that. That is hilarious. Uh, but yes, the papers really do stick to the drippers and I think that is because of the design uh, on the inside. So ultimately speaking, this is in my opinion, such a great entry into the pour over space, especially considering it's so cheap. It's 10, 15 bucks. You don't really have to learn all these crazy V60 pouring techniques. You know, you read up online, everyone has a different technique and there are some good techniques. But for this, it is just in my opinion, one of the most straightforward ways to get a good cup of pour over coffee. So that was the Hario Mugen, at least from the perspective of a beginner. So I really like this dripper again because of the price point as well as the accessibility to make a good cup of coffee. You don't have to use crazy good technique and you don't have to spend a lot of money like the Stag X to get a good cup of coffee. In my opinion, it is so awesome to see that we the accessibility of something like the Stag X be brought into such a cheap dripper. And it is, I think, such a good entry point, at least if you were just learning or trying to get pour into the pour over game, starting with something like this 
and just having to do a single pour is much, much easier than the crazy stuff that you can do with a regular V60. So uh, I really like this dripper. Thank you again for spending the time to watch the video. We'll be taking a look at some other interesting Japanese drippers, and I'll also be releasing a video about the decent pour over basket. So thanks again for spending the time to watch the video, and let me know if you have any questions.